So just for clarity, I've had a quick tidy up of our queries. We previously had three, but I've now condensed this down to two, just so we have one query for task and one for customers. Uh, I've simply just removed the CSV one. Uh, if you want to, or you need to delete a query yourself, all you need to do is right click the applicable query to delete, and then use, of course, the delete button here. Uh, you'll then obviously be asked to confirm that deletion uh, before it gets completely removed from your report. And then I just use the rename option, as we can see here, in order to remove the file extension that was previously for these two queries. In this video, we're going to cover off a custom column. So what this is, is gives you the ability to add your own custom column to a particular query. So the two scenarios we're going to cover off is using static text. So if you literally just want one value to appear throughout your whole data set, or the ability to use an if statement if you need to do a, a logical test or expression again on your data. So in order to add a column, we're literally gonna to go to the tab add column, and you can see there is a range and options available to us, which I would encourage you to have a play around. Just that's probably the best way to discover what and how to use the function in here. But we're simply gonna stick with custom column. So I'll click that button and you can see we now get a pop-up. The first thing we're gonna be asked to do is to provide a title or a name for our column. So let's call this one uh, custom text. And in the below that, you can see we've got our custom column formula. So just to cover off the two main areas here. So on the left-hand side, this is where we enter our formula. And on the right-hand side, this is all of the fields we have available in this particular query. Because we're gonna be using some static text, we don't need to worry about these columns at the moment. So all I'm gonna do in quotations, and as soon as you do a, hold down the shift and do one quotation, you can see it's already given you a second one. It's identified that you want to add text, and of course it needs to have a, a quotation either side of that text string. So I'm just gonna enter into here uh, tasks. Uh, something very basic, but of course this query we're looking at is tasks. Um, there could be a range of reasons why you need to add static data. Uh, can't think of the best example off the top of my head, but at least we're covering it off for you in this video. You can see we've got a little test here, a green tick saying no syntax errors, uh, errors have been detected, was always good. So I'm simply gonna then click on okay. And you can now see a, cust a new step has been added called added custom. So of course, added custom, you know, we can roughly understand what that's doing, but let's say we want to make this step a bit more descriptive. And of course, this applies to all of the steps in our queries. All I'm gonna do is right click, and you can see we've got the option here to go rename. So all I'm gonna do is go into here, and in front of custom, uh, let's call this uh, add column, custom text. And then once I'm happy, I hit enter. So now we've got a bit more of a descriptive text so we can see what's actually happening in this particular step. Uh, nice and easy, if we needed to change any of this, like we wanted to change the name or of course the value present there, we can now just change it in this formula bar. Else, if we want to get in a bit more detail, maybe our, we've got a bit more of a complex formula, all we need to do is click on this cog. Again, this is an applicable step to other uh, steps what has this feature click the cog with a left click and you can see we get that pop-up box come again so we can just have a bit more clearer view of our formula being used so let's just cancel that for now so the second uh, item we're going to look at is how to use uh, a logical test or add a formula such as an if statement so we'll go back into custom column and we'll get our same pop-up game this time we'll call this custom um, formula, again, limited creativity today. So in order to do an if statement, it's really nice and simple. Start off with if and do a space. We don't need to do any brackets uh, here. And interestingly, we're using mQuery, which is the sort of the code for Power Query. So we've done our if, again, no brackets needed. And because this time we're gonna be referring to one of our fields, let's use uh, priority. So I want to use this field. All I need to do is select priority and I can either then click on insert, having selected it, or by preference as I just double click on the field 
and you can see it's been added there. Alternatively, if you really like the manual approach, you could obviously just make sure you copy or enter the field correctly with uh, the boxed um, brackets as you see there around either side. So if priority equals high, and let's just make this a bit more case sensitive, high. So if it equals high, then then, so again, quite a simple way to do this, I want to present high, else if the value is not high, I want to present other. So you can see all I'm really doing here is going from our three priorities of high, medium and low to either high and other. So again, I'm sure you'll think of many other ways to get this more complex or bring more business logic that you need. Uh, for argument's sake, you might want to be doing an if statement off of dates if something is of a particular time frame. However, hopefully this serves the purpose of demonstrating at a basic level. We can once again see we've got a green tick with no syntax, syntax errors syntax errors haven't been detected, it's easy for me to say. So once I've done that, I'll click on to OK. And you can see we've now got another um, added custom step added. Again, let's go into rename and go add column, what do we call it, custom formula. We can now clearly see what that step is doing and we can see it's been added to us here. And one obviously quick test is to make sure we can only see the words high or other in there as well. Lastly, we can see both of these have been added as a text string denomination. So all I'm going to do in both of these is just go into change that to text and the same for our custom formula. So let's go into text. And what's really good and keeps things a bit tidier, as you'll notice, because we are doing formatting or the same logic across multiple columns, uh, all it's done is obviously contain that in one single step, uh, rather than obviously creating two steps for this particular task. Now that we want to make sure this is saved and applied to our actual report, so let's go on to home, close and apply, and you can now see what will happen is PowerPoint BI will refresh, and that data will be available to us in the task query. Uh, obviously at the moment we can see in our data pane we've got our old naming conventions for all of our queries or tables, as we refer to in here. That's now been updated, so if we now go into tasks, interestingly, what we can now see is we've got our two custom formulas here. So custom formula and custom text. But because we've done the uh, formulas and the additions within Power Query, they just appear as normal fields to us here. So if we're going to go into our table view and look at tasks, uh, you can see, oh, if I get some data when I click on them, yeah, there's no formula available to us at this level. We have to do any additions or alterations within Power Query, but the benefit is it just gives us less queries uh, or less formulas to have to play around uh, at this level. So at this stage, as always, recommend you jump into Power Query, play around with the two examples we looked at just here, and while you're in there, maybe have a look at some of the other options you have available uh, to you in Power Query when working with custom columns. If you have any questions at all with this or future videos, please just drop a comment below the applicable video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And lastly, if you do enjoy these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm enabling other people to also find these videos as well.